Okay, right. Um, this next lecture is on shutdown decisions. And what I want you to kind of keep at the back of your mind when you're thinking about this is that sometimes within a business, a division might be apparently making a loss. But really, this probably might just be due to the way costs have been apportioned. So your focus is really about, right, how do I actually find out whether or not this business is truly making um, a loss and we might be losing out if we shut it down if the allocations have just been really high that have been assigned to that department have just been very high okay great so I mean if, it, if, it, if it's truly making a loss yes then the business can think about shutting it down of course then there are other issues which we'll look at, look at now so the business might have to, to decide whether or not to shut down that, that, that business um, the question is what are the relevant costs associated with closing well if you close the business, you lose the contribution from that area. If there are any penalties and costs relating to um, compensation, any known reorganization costs, redundancies, things like that. Um, any benefits? Well, you might have saved some money uh, in terms of fixed costs and any other known additional contributions from those from the alternative use of relatives from uh, relative resources. So the argument really is that if I guess the focus really is, it's really about the comparing relevant benefits versus the relevant closure costs. And then you also have some non-quantifiable decisions in terms of um, just um, reputation, in terms of not really knowing what reorganization might be, the level of reorganization that might be involved. Um, additional contribution may not be known with certainty so um, you know there are other things that yes you may the numbers might tell you to close but you don't actually um, you would have to think again before making that decision here's a nice little example if you go in your textbook you can pause and go in your textbook to page 202 um, so I'll give you a second to do that Right, and if you look on page 200, I've left all these blank, but I'm going to go to the to the text just because I'm making a video um, so that we can sort of see what's going on. Um, so here I am on page um, 202, and you can see you have an example here of of this department. Um, this is the management of Fiona is considering. Um, is considering the closure of Department 3. And currently, Department 3 is making a loss. So, I mean, as far as you look at things from here, you can think, yes, well, that is true. It is making a loss. But the question is, what's going on in here in terms of production overheads? You know, is this fairly distributed um, along these different departments? And even with labor and material, what type of um, overhead costing or analysis has been used? So before you close down a division, sometimes it's good just to ask a few more questions to see if we should recalculate and redistribute some of these costs. And therefore, and materials will probably be, be what it is. But um, so let's look at the conditions, the issues here. It tells us first of all that production overheads of fifteen thousand have been apportioned um, on the basis of unit sales volume, um, and expenses are head office overheads against. They, again based on the proportion of sales volume. So this is very much an overhead absorption um, method used to do this um, based on volume, if you remember. But that might not be the case. A much better way of apportioning this cost would be your sort of cost driver activity based costing method. It actually tells us that you see half of the production overheads like from over here, telling me that half of these production overheads, so 7,500 of these, are actually apportioned differently. So it tells you they're actually apportioned on the basis of 2, 2, 1. And then it tells me 60% of the expenses um, are apportioned 3, 3, 2. So really, 60% of this figure here, so 24,000 of these are apportioned 3, 3, 2. And so you can see straight away we're beginning to rearrange the costs. And it tells me that 80% of what I'm calling direct labor is actually fixed. So somehow in here, this direct labor, 80% of this 
is fixed. So we shouldn't even have the 63,000 here. Um, we should have fixed costs. Um, because remember that to make these sort of decisions, we're comparing sales with variable costs and then taking off fixed costs. So we need to kind of do that recalculation um, there, there as well. And so, you know, I, the argument is really um, do that recalculation and then let's see whether or not um, there is a difference. So let's go to the, the answers on page 231. So we can actually see what's happened. I mean, it's pretty much just um, a process of recalculating and reassigning costs to, um, to these things. So what do we have now? It says 80% of the labor cost is fixed, like I said, and excluded. So, you know, that's this you note know, 4. I've taken 80%. That's the... Um, 80% of it that's fixed, taken out of that. That's the 50,400, which is 80% of that full labor cost. And then split the rest, 12,600, according to the ratio that we were given. The materials have stayed the same. Then remember that we said that 50% of the production overheads were split um, 332, I think. And that's that 7,500. And the same thing we did with the expenses. So we have the variable costs now, and we have the rest as fixed costs, still arriving at the same net profit. But in terms of variable costing, we've been able to isolate the variable costs. And we can see clearly that um, Division 3 is actually making a contribution, um, albeit a much less contribution to these. But at least now you're aware that it's not actually making a loss, but it's making a contribution to, to the business. So um, again, just looking at the answers here, from the from the from this restatement, it's making a, it's making a contribution, and the loss has arisen purely from the inappropriate apportionment of overheads and expenses. So no problem if you wish to close it. If you make if you wish to close it, then the relevant cost is the loss of four thousand five hundred and sixty one, and um, you can see here that therefore. Unless you unless you could do something about I don't know selling off or the fixed cost is there so you're still gonna have to pay the fixed cost so your saving pretty much will just be will, 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 the profit will reduce by four five six points to this so six fifty six thousand four hundred thirty nine now that's that's the relevant you've lost that contribution but then you might have other costs of people working in that department and um, satisfying the demand of the, of the might have contracts with the people you sold the product to, you have to fulfill or um, pay to, to, to come out of. There might be reorganization costs. So, um, you know, you might get benefits from the machines and labor being used there. So that's really, this, the, the question really is about comparing the relevant benefits. Um, I'll just go back to the question if you want to. The question really is about comparing what are the relevant benefits and the relevant um, costs of closing down Department 3? But the first thing is, just don't take for granted. Remember, this is profit as well, and this includes all the fixed costs. So what we need to look at is contribution in order to make this, in order to make this decision. Right, let's go back to the slides. I think that's really the um, where we it? I want to look at that. Yes, and that's, and that's on, that's on, um, Shut down, shut down decisions. Again, it's a relevant cost. Focus on the variable costs, um, and then compare um, the relevant benefits and the relevant costs, and, and then you can make a decision based on other non or more other qualitative um, factors that might be involved. Okay, great stuff. I'll see you in the next video.